Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going to be going over how to use the prompt generator from Salesforce within your Salesforce org. Uh, this is going to be an Einstein product, an AI tool that you can use to help your users of Salesforce to kind of get better and understand more about their records. So couple things first, let's go ahead and jump into setup here. Now I've already enabled the Einstein org with that. Let's go ahead and I'll show you. You would search for Einstein, then you'd go to Einstein setup, and then it's just a little toggle on. So now that that's set up, you can do that. Refresh the page and it should change up some of these settings. Now I'm gonna go into prompt builder and we're gonna go into new prompt template. So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can do field generation, flex, or record summary. I am gonna do field generation. So essentially it's gonna be a little confusing with our scenario. Right now we're just going to generally summarize a case, but we're going to be doing it into a new field. So let's go ahead and just say summarize case as the template name, and I'm not gonna enter in description, but we do need to add our object here. Then let's go ahead and enter in the field. We've already have this field created for us. So let's go ahead and do a quick summary. The process of creating that field, it's just the same as any other field creation process, but then through the prompt generation and changing up and adding the template to the field as well as making it into a dynamic form will add the tools needed. So that process is the same. Uh, just follow these steps and it should turn this field into the AI field. So let's go ahead and click next. All right, so now there's a couple different things that I want to point out here. Prompt generation template workspace. This is where you're going to write your command or your prompt for whatever model you're gonna be using to create the summary. There are a few different pieces to this. You can also enter in your resources. So this is going to be your fields that you're gonna to wanna to put into your prompt so the model knows where to look for the information that you're asking for. You've also got your models over here. You can use different Azure models or OpenAI models. I'm gonna use ChatGPT4, and then we can enter in a related record. So I've already looked at records and I like this one. So actually, no, I'm gonna do a different one. So let's go ahead and enter in that one. Let's go ahead and jump actually into that record real quick, and then we'll see what we wanna pull in. Let's go to all open cases. Now we're gonna go to that one that I liked. Okay, so we've got a couple of comments here that we might wanna pull in. So we'll wanna pull in the case comments. Looking at other things, we probably don't need to pull in the owner. We don't need to necessarily pull in the contact name unless you want to. I think the subject, the status, and the priority could be good ones. And you can see we already have a quick summary field and we'll turn that field into an AI field later on when we are working to change this into a dynamic form and entering in that prompt that we do. But let's go back to the prompt. So let's go ahead and say, summarize the case using the case comments, the case status, the uh, what were the other ones we wanted? Uh, the priority, the, and the subject in a paragraph or two. All right. So now that we have kind of laid out all the things that we want, let's go ahead and go back to the different things we wanted to put into our prompt and let's go ahead and enter in our resources. So this one is going to be case comments. So we're gonna to go to resources here, go to case, and then go to comments here. All right, now we have entered that in. Let's go ahead and then we're gonna do case status. So let's go back to case and do status here. All right. 
this might be a little tedious for you. Now we're going to do case priority. Case. You can scroll down or just search for it once you've entered in the object or the resource. Now finally we're going to do the subject. Alright, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and save and preview this. This might take a little bit of time. Alright, so now you can see here in the preview, we have entered in our example record that we wanted to use and it has generated the response and it has generated that using the different inputs that we have. So I am going to activate this since this worked. So much like how you'd use this for a flow. If you need to change anything, you would deactivate it, then change it, and then save it as a new version or as a new template if you wanted to change it, but use this as like a, a template of a template and do this maybe for something else. So let's go ahead and jump back to this record here. I am going to refresh it. I'm kind of a refresh nerd when it comes to records because then you know it's using the most updated and you're not going to run into as many issues but it might take some time but let's go ahead and go to edit page here and then we're going to turn this details into a dynamic form click on the actual details I'm going to click upgrade now for the case layout that one's just the most general one i'm just gonna click that finish okay so now that that is updated let's go to that one field that we do want to enter in that template for. So this is when you're going to turn this field into an AI field. So let's go ahead and select our prompt template. And it is the one we want is summarize case. So let's go ahead and click save here. All right, now the page is saved. Let's go ahead and activate it. And just for kicks and giggles, I'm going to assign it as the default for desktop and phone. All right, click save. Now we're gonna go back. And this may or may not refresh the page. It does look like it did because now that what would look like a little edit button has turned into like an edit star button. So if I were to click on this, now we could click this little star button and then it will run that prompt for us. So, is using the prompt that we created over here, the summarize case prompt, and it has created that one. We could give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, or we could use it. When we click use it, boom, we have entered in a case summary. So it just filled up that full field for us. Now this could save your users a lot of time, especially if you are working hands-on with a lot of different people. This can just get people started quickly on the case. So yeah, if we wanted to save that, we could go ahead and save that. Or if we wanted to go back in, let's see, we could probably ask it another question. Let's see. Yes, but we'd have to do it a little bit differently. So we'd have to go here. All right, it's analyzing our request. Give it a couple minutes. It's probably going to create the same thing. I'm not going to edit this down either. So let's see, we could do... When was the case created? All right, it's working on it. All right, and it doesn't say when it was specified. So that's something that we would probably need to go back and look at, but feel free to play around with this and figure it out in your own org. You can do this for other objects as well. You could do this for like opportunities. It could be super useful for leads, especially if there's gonna be a lot of different people touching it. I'm gonna click save here so it it saves all the information, but that is how you create a prompt generator within Salesforce. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at EmilyCallMBA. You can check out the courses down below in the description or on salesforceupskill.com. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.